All right, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Justin Norm. I am here, and um, hopefully you can see me good and everything. I'm on my wife's computer right now, so things are a little different. You're looking at cakewalk. You see this red box that's at the bottom saying activation required. Some are asking me questions about this in the comments, like, what the heck is going on? Why, when I try to activate it, it's not allowing me to sign in? Are you having issues with cakewalk in that way? Um, so the reason why this popped up was because I just updated to the newest version of cakewalk. I haven't done it on this computer because I'm not never on here. I'm always on my desktop. So um, when it's down here like this, it's just giving you an indication that you need to do that. Otherwise, things might not work right. So you can see at the very top, it says not activated. So... If it says not activated at the top, then you need to hurry up and activate it. So what you're going to do is go to help, go to um, sign in to band lab. All right. Make sure you got signed in. And then once you sign in, you are successfully signed into Cakewalk by BandLab. You may close this window. So now you saw a message that popped up at the bottom that said Cakewalk is actually activated now. And now you don't see the not activated anymore. It's fully activated. So that's one thing that might be the issue. Make sure you go to sign in to BandLab from the Cakewalk software. All right. The next thing that we need to go ahead and do is talk about. Um, let's talk about. Let me create a new project real quick. This is so weird being on a uh, laptop trying to do this. Hope you all feeling great today so far. Um Let's see. Do I want to deal with that one? Let's create a new project. So what I'm looking for is how do you go about when you're dealing with recording drums, whether whether you use an SI drum kit, Alisa's, Roland, whatever type of drum kit you're doing, uh, how I like to go about editing my drum parts, because SI drum kit does not have separate outputs. And what I mean by that is when I add an instrument track uh, out Right click, right? How you? Okay. All right, got to Sorry, on this mouse pad, you got to tap it with two fingers to get the right click to come up. I'm used to having a mouse. So insert instrument, and let's do uh, SI drum kit, right? Okay, it's going to create one track. All right, so we got this one track here. Now, we got sound, right? Cool. We got sound, which is good. Um, I should have had headphones on when I did this. I didn't really think about this, but sorry. This is just going to be one of those videos where I probably should do this a little better. Sometimes I feel weird, like being on a laptop. I have no idea what I'm doing on it when I'm on it. But anyway, so we got the SI drum kit. You already know this is one track. So it's a few different ways I can do this. One, if you're going to record drums and you want everything separated, you can either, one, create multiple tracks up front, go through and record the bass drum part, record the snare drum part, record the hi-hat part, uh, or you can do MIDI, which is what we normally do here, which is just basically inputting using the step sequencer or using the piano roll or if you want to play it live out you know on your control pad or your controller of some sort then you can do that so when i record drums i'm gonna press alt zero to bring up my little virtual keyboard okay i can record some Okay, let's try it. Okay. All right. I don't know how that's going to sound on the recording. Because that's pick, being picked up twice from my microphone, too, as well. I should have did a separate tracks, basically. Oh, well. I mean, not separate tracks, but I should have did separately going into OBS. Uh, hopefully, that came out cool. Um, and then... I'm not really worried about the way it sounds right now. I'm not really worried about mixing or anything like that. 
assuming that this was my Elise's, I was playing into this, I'm using the Elise's as a controller. What I like to do is, because I know that I want everything separated. Like right now, this is just one track. I can't really mix this like I really want to. So what I need to do is, like I said, if, one, if you want to record each part in separately, you can do that too as well. Uh, if you have a virtual instrument that allows you to split the channels, then that's cool because then you can have, you know, the outputs send to eight, seven, ten different tracks. And when it's sent there, all the MIDI data will be split up automatically to go to each track. SI Drum Kit does not allow that. Uh, but in the new Cakewalk, in the new Cakewalk Sonar, uh, you will have that feature because we have one of the old uh, session drummer, which is returning to Cakewalk. So uh, that's going to be very exciting. And then that will allow you to do those outputs. Then you could just play on your leases or your Roland or whatever. You got your Simmons. You can play directly into the computer and it'll automatically split the MIDI up to different tracks. And then you can go about trying to mix it that way. Uh, but what I want to do is I want complete control over the audio aspect of it, not just the MIDI. So what I'm going to do is I can do it this way. I'm doing this very slow. So, you know, now here I got to press the mouse pad twice. If you're on a laptop, press twice. You know, if yours works like that, if you got a mouse then you're cool, right click. If it's got the right click on it. All right. So I'm going to open it up and I'm going to go to duplicate track. And what this is going to do is. It's going to duplicate all the data that's within this track. But I have to make sure that I have the events checked. If the events is not checked, then you're not going to hear anything. It's just going to be blank. You know, so you got to make sure the events are checked. But you don't want link to original clip to be checked. All right. Starting at track two. And all I got on here is bass, snare, and hi-hat. So all I need is two more tracks. Press OK. Now, you're going to notice that all of these tracks have the same data now. So if I go through track one, if I go through track two, if I solo track three, okay, you'll notice that all of them have the same data. I don't want them to have the same data. I just copied it to make it easier because I don't feel like, you know, trying to, you know, highlight it and drag and drop it to a new track. That's... That's crazy. We don't feel like doing all that. So what you're going to do is I'm going to name this bass drum. I'm going to name this. Uh -oh, there we go. Snare drum. Uh oh, there we go. I'm going to name this hi-hats. All right. There we go. Now, so if I want to delete the bass drum part, I'm going to double click on it. It's going to open up the piano roll. Normally, you might see velocity open, but you don't see the velocity part up. Like velocity is at the bottom, but sometimes you'll see all the lines up top. So this is my bass drum. My bass drum says it's on C3. That's what it says. It depends on what kind of kit you're using. If you're using a different type of virtual instrument, then your kick might be on C, it might be on B, it might be on B flat, uh, it might be an octave down, it might be an octave up. It just depends on the way it's set up. But on here, that's my bass drum, C3, all right? I want to get rid of the snare. So I'm going to click on E3, because this is the bass drum track. I'm going to click it one time, and then you notice it highlights everything. And I'm going to press delete. I'm going to go to the hi-hat. Press delete. And then I did do an open hi-hat. So let me go to that. Press delete. All right. Only thing that's on here now is bass drum. And I can prove that. Oops, I didn't mean to go there. By just soloing. Okay. That's just bass drum. I'm going to go back to snare drum. All right. This is perfect if you've already finished your production and you know your beat, your drum beats probably not changing much. You know, do scuts, do do cuts, do scut. If that's the whole song, this is perfect for that. If you're more of a person that you love orchestration and you know the drum parts are going to be changing up a lot, then you might want to just go ahead and create those separate tracks from the get go 
and then just, you know, produce them on each track, you know, whichever way you're going to do it. So I know uh, this is a snare, so I don't need the hi-hat. Delete that. Don't need that. And then let's go down to the bass drum. I'm going to delete that. C3, that's the bass drum. Now all I have is E3, which is a snare that's on this track, all right? So I can do, uh, let me see, pull this over. Pull this over. Make this easier. Sometimes these might be claps, but you can open it up. And then now I can just click straight to the next track, which is the hi-hats. So the hi-hats, I know I don't need the bass drum. No, I don't need the snare. And so now if I've done that correctly, I can go back to my track view. Oops. Looks like I erased the snare completely. It's okay, Control-Z. I think somehow I erased it <laughs> accidentally. I don't know how I did that. Um, so anyway, here we go. We got the hi-hat, so let's listen to that. Okay, that scared me for a second. I'm hearing my, I was hearing my sound from my computer, and I was like, dang, I was like, when did I get a melody in there? Here's the, uh, okay, that's the snare. So the hi-hats, oh, I know what it was. When I clicked on that, so when I was here, and I went to go click on this, it still was highlighting this track. So make sure you click on the pencil, right, to select it, all right? So when I go back to this one, that's the bass drum, that's the snare, and this is the one that should be hats. All right, so, and then I can see the snare is still there. So now I can delete that. And that should just have hats. And hopefully, this time I did not delete the snare drum track. Okay, cool. Now we got everything. So let me solo the hats. I'm taking my time with this, you all. So I know you're probably like, dude, man, you're moving so slow today. But I want to do this because um, sometimes it's... I may think I'm moving slow, but evidently I'm not moving slow enough. So everyone can catch on. I want you really to have this information. Okay, so then when I can put this together, then I can play the whole thing. So now that I have each of these tracks have their individual, you know, VST instrument on it. So if I didn't like that snare, you know, I can change it. I can change the pitch. Okay, maybe I want it right there. Okay, but you notice it did not affect the other instruments. Same thing with this hat. Maybe I want the hat to be down some more. This is perfect because I can just turn the volume down here. You know, maybe I want to pitch it up. Maybe I want to add more compression to it. Maybe I want to add a whole lot of reverb to it. Okay. I don't know why you would do that, but, but if you wanted to, you might do that. So that is how I go about separating my drums. Uh, this is perfect, like I said, if you are playing live. Like when I'm playing live, I'm not trying to... Um, think about setting up all these tracks. Like I want to set up one track and I want to get to going. Now, if you do have separate tracks set up, um, some modules, some MIDI modules will allow you to send separate output. So it just depends on how your brain is set up of whatever unit you're using. So if it allows you to send outputs um, MIDI wise, then that way you can plug the USB cable up and then you can separate it. Now, drums typically do run on channel 10, right? Channel 10, channel 11. Um, but when you're doing stuff like this, you don't, I don't really trip off of channels anymore. If you wanted to change the channel, uh, you can go down. So I'm going back to my inspector on the side and then I'm going down to MIDI, all right? So MIDI at the bottom. And now I can go through, and if that bass drum, if I wanted to change it to a different channel, I can do that. But once you have them on their separate instruments, each of these tracks have their own instrument. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter what channel you got it on. So it shouldn't <laughs> affect it. It only affects it when you're dealing with MIDI and you're coming from your unit. Or if you're trying to run like one instrument to 16 different tracks, like the TST um, if you want to use that, the Kekwal T, I mean, not TST, but Kekwal TTS, if you want to use that, then yeah, you might want to have, you know, piano on track on channel one based on channel two, et cetera. But for this, you don't have to worry about that. I hope